We must see the prison director quickly. Sorry, sirs. I'm on duty. I can't help you. Go to the secretary's office. Let us go to the secretary's office. <coughs> A good morning, miss. Oh, uh, excuse me, I dropped off. Good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you? I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We would like to talk to you about it. I'll just go and see if he can receive you. Tiredness, pale face, stiffness. I believe that the young lady is expecting a happy event. It would seem so. This charming secretary is Miss Jenny Patterson. This small rack is for urgent letters to be given immediately to the director. This charming secretary is Miss Jenny Patterson. Hot tea. The director's office, Mr. P. Patterson. No need to go in there. The secretary of the same name. I'm delighted to meet you, Mr. Holmes. I am Paul Patterson, director of this establishment. You wish to talk to me. I hope this unexpected visit isn't to announce bad news. No, do not worry. We are investigating an affair of the highest importance, one which could potentially affect the security of the kingdom. Therefore, it is imperative that we interview one of your prisoners, Hans Schuman. Hans, the rat killer? He's been in here for a long while now, and he's had no contact with the outside. How could he be involved in such an affair? That is what we would like to find out. And you have been commissioned by Scotland Yard? Evidently. Well, I have complete confidence in you, Mr. Holmes. I will draw up a pass that you should give to Warden James in the guardroom. He will show you to the cells. Thank you, Director. Keep me informed of your progress. And if there is anything else, don't hesitate to let me know. We shall certainly do so. Miss Patterson, you have the same name as the Director. Are you related? Come, Watson. Anyone who might have made the slightest study of anthropology would have noted the similarities between the young lady and her father. Mr. Holmes is right. I am his daughter. But he doesn't like to talk about it. I think he's afraid of being accused of favouritism. I'm sure it was your qualities alone which secured you this position, Miss. If you must try out your powers of seduction, then what do you say about using them on the rat killer? Oh, goodbye, Miss. Goodbye, gentlemen. Let's go to the high security area, Holmes. Sorry, but this area is prohibited without a pass. Please leave. Ah, you've got a pass for the high security area. It's the door at the end. Go ahead. This information board is almost empty. Strange, in view of the activity in the prison. It is about the signing in book. It is potassium nitrate, isn't it? Yes. 
So, Peter or whatever. My name is Peter James, Chief Warden, and this is Deputy Warden O'Sullivan. I imagine I will find Hans Schielman behind these bars in the basement. Yes, the high security cells are down there. Is this the only access? Yes, there was a second door at the end of the main hall, but it's been blocked up as a security measure. Thank you, Chief Warden. At your service. If you require further information, Warden Mackenzie will help you. He is at his post in the basement. Mr. Holmes, I am a huge admirer of yours. I have followed all your cases and successes with the greatest interest. What enthusiasm. Have you ever thought of a career in the police force? Have I thought about it? It's my dream. I'm going to try my chance once this establishment closes down. I'm studying hard for the examination to get into police school. Tell me about the prisoners, Warden James. We only have a few. As you might be aware, the days of this place are numbered. Therefore, we no longer receive new prisoners. Those who are already here are among the most dangerous in London. We have three at the moment. Hans the Rat Killer and the Flint Brothers. The Flint Brothers? Yes, two rather simple-minded maniacs who detest one another despite their relation. They massacred their parents and decapitated their neighbours. Took more than nine policemen to overpower them. There isn't any information on the notice board. Should there be notes about duties? Yes, there should be, but Miss Patterson hasn't put up the guard's assignments for this week yet. It's not like her. Usually she does it first thing in the morning. Without these instructions, the guard in the basement won't be changed. I would go and get them, but I don't want the director to catch me there. He's very strict. He doesn't like us wandering around when we're on duty. And it would get his daughter in trouble. How does not having the information about guard duty stop you from ensuring the watch in the basement? Because of the system of opening the doors, Mr. Holmes. As you can see, they are equipped with a mechanical timer which answers to a code. When the timer stops, that is to say at the end of each watch, the doors block automatically and the code is reset. It is therefore impossible to open the doors without the new code. And who has the code? Only the guard who takes the new watch. He's the only one who can open the envelope that it's kept in. He learns it by heart and destroys the message. Very clever. But let's look at the limits of this procedure. One false note and the system falls apart. See you later, Mr. Holmes. These weapons are obviously ready to use in case of emergency. It is the guard's guest book, perhaps for distinguished guests. This device must be the alarm. This device. Here's the famous high security area. Warden Mackenzie, at your service, sir. Good morning, Warden. I have a pass which allows me to speak with prisoner Hans. Very well. It is the cell at the end to your left. I'd advise you to walk in the middle of the corridor. I'm gonna kill my brother. But before that, I'm gonna make him eat his own eyes. Just for love. <laughs> Hey, brother, lucky for you that they caught you before I rearranged your dirty little rat's face. <laughs> Hi. 
Hans Schielman. I require some information from you. So, who do we have here? The celebrated Sherlock Holmes himself. Do you know that for all the time I have spent rotting in here, you are my first and only visitor? I think this is cause for celebration. A confrontation between two geniuses, two extraordinary minds. I am afraid that you are not quite as great a chemist as you believe you are, Mr. Shieldman. I will not say that you never were. No, it was certainly true once. But you see, while you are whiling away your days in here, it appears that someone on the outside is at the point of surpassing you, if that is not already the case. Yes, I heard about that. A chemical poison that eats away at the flesh and provokes hysteria. I recognize talent when I see it, but it's only a matter of time before I win back my laurels, believe me. What can you tell me? That depends on what you can bring to me. What do you want? <laughs> do you know why I am treated so harshly? For my meals, I am given nothing but a hunk of bread. And even then, not just any sort. The... Get to the point. Never interrupt me! <sighs> Where was I? Oh yes, the bread. Did you know that with a little rye yeast, a pinch of moss, certain cockroach secretions, just enough light and damp with a few other ingredients that I will keep quiet about, I succeeded in poisoning half the staff here. <laughs> Unfortunately, a little something was omitted, which would have made the results fatal. Instead, it merely caused acute attacks of stress and powerful hallucinations. Even so, I got a great laugh out of watching them cry like babies when they saw their most primitive fears materializing before them. <laughs> you are a monster, Mr. Shieldman. Thank you. It wasn't a compliment. But of course it was! You others, you ordinary, narrow-minded people. You are afraid of anything that you cannot comprehend. You call me a monster, because what you find impossible to face is just the slightest fraction of my genius. If by monster you mean someone who is nothing like you, <laughs> then it is a compliment. What do you need? Very little. Just something to write with. You see my brain races like an engine with too many thoughts. I see them crackle and explode into thousands of formulae right in front of me. What a torture not to be able to write them down. What a hell to see them vanish just as quickly as they appear to me. Just bring me something that I can write with. That's all. That seems an easy enough request to fulfill. But listen, I don't want a vulgar inkwell and a pigeon's feather. No, I need material fit for my talent. I want my ink pen. Bring it to me, and I will be happy to pass on to you a little of my knowledge of modern chemistry. Where is it? It was confiscated upon my arrival here. I suppose it might be in my locker, in the locker room. Leave me now, and don't come back without my ink pen. See you soon, Mr. Holmes. We must go to the locker room, Holmes. Guards must spend long hours here. <laughs> the 
the locker room. This is where the prisoners' things are kept. Closed. Miss, may we borrow the keys to the locker room? We will need authorization from the director to open that door. If you wait a moment, then I'll inform him. We will wait, thank you. Anything new, Mr. Holmes? Is your investigation advanced? Mr. Holmes, have you been able to get what you wanted from our launcher? Not yet. We must first cast light upon a crucial point, and for that we require your help again. What can I do? We need to examine Shieldman's civilian clothing. Very well, but be extremely careful. What do you mean? In that madman's compartment, you will find a strange little coded case which refused my black We did try to force it, but without success. Didn't you ask the expert? Of course we did. Experts from Scotland Yard came to examine it, where they came to the conclusion that it was better that the case remained shut than tamper with it too much. I see. They were afraid that some poison or other might escape if it was opened. Exactly. Bear in mind that this man is an evil genius, a master poisoner, and that his poisons are never ordered. Here's the key to the locker room. I give you the authorization to open it. Good. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Miss Patterson, the guards are still waiting for you to put up the duty list. Do it as soon as possible. Without it, the changing of the guard cannot take place. Or had you forgotten? <laughs> Try your tears, miss. I'm certain that your father didn't mean to hurt you. Mr. Watson, I can't put up the duty list. When he finds out, he'll be furious. Why can't you? It's in my locker, in the cloakroom, and I've lost the key. Your aunt. Say no more, Holmes. As you keep repeating, time is against us. Let's go and look at the things in the rat killer's locker. Here is the locker of our friend, Hans, the mad scientist. Oh, what a jumble! This solid box must hold a precious object. Let us see. This cannot be a simple coincidence. There's something interesting here. There's something interesting here. Perfect. What is written on that note, Holmes? Later, Watson, later. We can give Hans his pen. Blotting paper. A paper knife. of incompetence. Oh, if I was as unprofessional as that, there would be murderers running all over the town. What's the matter? Are you a patient of Dr. Watson? Very 
amusing. I was going on about the dry cleaners in Westgate Street. I've just delivered my ceremonial uniform in the middle of my duty when I've told them a thousand times not to bring it until after six in the evening. A ceremonial uniform? You've been promoted? No, and that's not about to happen. No, I've been invited to a wedding. I, I mean, I hope to be. I'm in trouble. If the director sees that I've left my post, I'll be sacked without pay. Give it to me, Warden Brighton. I'll take care of it for you. Really? Thanks a lot. Here's the key to the cloakroom and that of my locker. I'm really grateful, Mr. Holmes. What have you got in mind, Holmes? You're not doing this out of kindness, are you? No, out of curiosity. We will be able to access the cloakroom these keys. Staff cloakroom. Closed. Here is Brighton's locker. of soda. Brighton must have an upset stomach, caused by stress without a doubt. The name on the key is Jenny Patterson. That is interesting. I need something. Brighton must have an upset stomach, caused by stress without a doubt. Let us examine Miss Patterson's locker. The lock on this box is rather sophisticated. Incredible! Is Jenny hiding something? Little Jenny is astonishing. Here is the famous guard duty list. Interesting. A letter from Brighton to Jenny. Barely literate. Apparently, Jenny is carrying Brighton's child, and it seems that Jenny's father the director is unaware of this. A locket sealing the relation between Jenny and Warden Brighton. Decidedly, this boy is not a great poet. What should we do next, Holmes? We can give Hans his play. We have found the guard duty cards, miss. If you like, I can go and discreetly give them to the guards. Oh, thank you. You've got me out of a lot of trouble, Mr. Holmes.
can't go into the basement for the moment. For what reason? The door has locked itself automatically. We must enter a new security code. Do it then. Miss Patterson hasn't put up the guard duty list yet. Without that information, we don't know who's authorized to take note of the new code. So Mackenzie is locked in the high security. Yes, but don't worry about him. He's trained this sort of dysfunction. Why not ask the director to take note of the code and open the door? He is an alarm. I doubt that he would rather risk it going against the orders of the administration centre. Anyway, the bars in the high security section are joined to the alarm system, which is in that room. We only need to sound it to unblock, but you see, we can't do that now. We'll try to find the duty list, Warden James. We have found Chief Warden James's duty list. Good. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Let's see. O'Sullivan, if you takes over from Mackenzie, take note of the code, please, and unblock the door. At once, Chief. Ah, oh, Mr. Rose, could I ask you for a favour? Please do. I think I can say, on behalf of all the staff, that we would be honoured if you would care to write something in our guest book. With pleasure, Miss Sullivan. You seem worn out, Miss Sullivan. A good night's sleep would do you good. A good night's sleep would do me good. You're right, Mr. Rose. Is something worrying you? As you know, Westgate Prison will soon be demolished, and I'm spending most of my nights studying for my exam to join the police. You understand, I have to think about my future. So sleep is the priority at the moment. Scotland Yard is always looking for young, competent and motivated men. Would a letter of recommendation from me allow you to get some sleep? What? A letter from Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Recommending me for Scotland Yard? Are you quite serious? Completely serious, my young friend. May I use this writing paper? The one on your desk. A thousand thanks, Mr. Holmes. A thousand thanks! It is addressed to Inspector Baines, a good friend of mine. There's no need to remind you that it must be opened only by the person to whom it is addressed. Yes, of course. I'll give it to him personally. Thank you again, Mr. Holmes. At your service, Mr. Rose. You have what you wanted, your precious pen. You seem annoyed, Mr. Holmes. I would even go so far as to say, tell me the worries. Why should you care, Mr. Shieldman? Let's talk about that poison. I am not talking about you in the grip of natural emotions found in ordinary people who are confronted by the inexplicable. But as for Mr. Holmes, you are embarrassed, aren't you? Are you hiding something? That is enough, Shieldman. You have kept your word. Therefore, I will keep mine. At this moment, the poison which so interests you isn't finished yet. Its maker is encountering great difficulties in attaining the desired results. What is the end result? Now, Mr. Holmes, the end result of any science as Descartes once said, to become the master and owner of nature. Here we are talking about human nature, of course, but the creator's problem isn't so much the mixture as the durability of his creation. What do you mean? You see, this poison was made using rare, but very volatile, short-living compounds, which means that it is only possible to produce small quantities, which most importantly, do not keep for a long time. 
conceiving such a product in a laboratory especially built for the purpose could be achieved by any good chemist. But recopying this alchemy on another scale and keeping it ready at any moment, observing the particular conservation, storing conditions that a substance of this type requires, well, that would need a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt if the creator of this mixture would be capable. And you would be, of course. Of course. Luckily, you are going to spend the rest of your life in prison. Luck is cyclical. It always comes around again, sooner or later. As far as I am concerned, I have the feeling that the cycle is going to be very short. It sounds to me as though this shieldman is implying that an escape attempt will be made. Yes, we must go. that your bastard is named Patterson. Very well. You refuse to reveal the father to me? Well, then go and join him. I'm not stopping you. I... I can't. Hmm. Director, you will have to postpone this small family reunion. We believe that a serious scheme is afoot. We must act without delay. You're not thinking of... Yes. Shieldman's words leave no room for doubt. It seems that he is planning an escape attempt. We strongly advise you to search his cell. Do you really believe that he's hiding something? Because I must make an official report and have a legitimate reason for doing a search. Director, if this prison is still in operation, it is solely because of its reputation. Think of the consequences of escape. It would be closed at once. And what post do you imagine would be offered to the person deemed responsible? You're right. No one will escape from Westgate under Patterson. I will order an immediate search in Mr. Shieldman's cell. Chief Warden James reporting. The search of prisoner Hans Shieldman's cell has been carried out. No suspicious items were found. Thank you, Chief James. I feel better now. Without wishing to offend you, Mr. Holmes, I am glad that you were mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, we've nothing more to do here. Shall we go, Holmes? There's just one more thing for me to see, Watson. What's that? Mr. Holmes, sorry to interrupt you, but Miss Jenny wishes to see you alone. She's waiting for you in her office. This, Watson. How did you know? Wait for me in the guard's room. I won't be long. What an extraordinary gentleman that Sherlock Holmes is. You must have had lots of adventures with him. Oh yes, dozens. Thought he was infallible. But there wasn't anything out of the way in the rat killer's cell. Could he have been mistaken? I must admit. Warden Brighton, in my office immediately. That's an order. The director seems furious. Yes, it must be important for him to order Brighton to leave his post. Wouldn't want to be in his shoes. Ah, help! Ah, ah, ah. You, did you hear that? Yes, that's not normal. I've never heard Flint shout like that. But why does no Sullivan sound the alarm? Follow me, Mackenzie. Let's go and have a look. I'll come with you. No, Dr. Watson, you're not allowed in. Wait for me here. Very well. Hey, but. Uh, the grill is blocked, Chief. We've been locked in. And that smoke, it's coming from below. Oh, Sullivan, can you hear us? Sully, are you alive? Answer us, Sully. What's going on? Can I help you? 
Sound the alarm in the guard room. That should unblock the door. Be quick. O'Sullivan might be in danger. It doesn't work. What are you waiting for to sound the alarm, Doctor? It's impossible. It's been damaged. I'll run and warn the Director. No, Doctor. Our priority is to save O'Sullivan. Go ahead through the visitor's corridor. See if he answers your call. Very well. Take the keys. They're in our room. O'Sullivan, can you hear me? O'Sullivan, answer me. Yes, I'm here. Quick, get me out of here. The flints have escaped and they are fighting like dogs. Help! It's... it's a catastrophe. We must repair the alarm. Finally, there you are, Holmes. I'm going to turn on the system. Watson, you make sure of the contact. I hope that this isn't dangerous. Open. Let's go down. Be careful. From what your colleague said, the flints are out. We are trained for this sort of situation. And we're armed. Come and help us, Watson. Everything is back to normal. Thank you for your help, gentlemen. It was a pleasure. But where is O'Sullivan? He's no longer here. He must have gone out through the visitors' entrance. Yes, and he must be pleased to have gotten out of the basement. Good. We must now check all the cells. The procedure in case of an alarm. We'll come and help you. You are evidently fond of wasting time, my dear fellow. Rejoin me at the reception when you've finished. The... the grate is open! This is alarming. He's fine where he is, under the cover, still. How can he sleep with all this noise? I'll admit it's not normal. Perhaps the smoke has poisoned him. I'd better take a look. Be careful, Doctor. He is dangerous. O'Sullivan! Oh, it's impossible. He was with us only a few moments ago. Or else... Or else it wasn't O'Sullivan. My God, he's escaped. The Rat Killer has escaped. escaped. I fear that this inquiry is a bitter defeat for us. Not at all, my dear fellow. Quite the contrary. Follow me. Why the devil have you brought me behind the prison? We have an appointment, Watson. 